Well, hello there, and welcome to Warsword Conquest. Now, this is the Winds of Magic beta, and it has just been updated with some rather amazing changes. And among those changes, the most major one that I can bring to your attention is the fact that you can use magic in sieges. Yes, everyone was really wanting this feature, and that is exactly what the creators have done. So let us start a new game and uh, we'll try it out. Now, here's the thing. I uh, <laughs> had some trouble getting uh, WSC working, Warband Script en Enhancer, if you don't know what WSC means, but anyway, I had some trouble actually getting that working, and they do say in the patch notes, or in the update notes, shall we say, that you don't have to switch out the EXE or anything like that. But I actually did have to switch out the EXE. So if anyone else is having some difficulties installing the WSC and having it working with uh, with Warsword Conquest, then basically if you have any other version of Warband, then just swap out the EXE and see if that works because I was trying it out and it was giving me an error and I don't know why that was. So yeah, anyway, there's just a little bit of a... Uh, not a warning, but just kind of like a hint for those of you that may have some issues getting WSE working with it. Anyway, uh, I have played Warsword Conquest so, so much. And I have played as a beast man, Chaos. I haven't played as a lizard man, uh, not, not extensively at the very least. I have played undead, not extensively. Played orc, again, not extensively. Night goblin, not so much. Chaos dwarf, not at all. Played elf pretty extensively. Dwarf, not so much. Skaven, very extensively. Halfling, well, <laughs> not extensively at all. And vampires, well, we haven't really played vampires either. Now, the one thing that we haven't also done is we have not aligned ourselves with the Empire. And I thought it might be a fun idea to actually do that in this special feature slash series. I don't exactly know what's going to happen with this just yet. But if you would also like to download the mod, then there is a link in the description. If you would like this to be a series, then by all means, leave it down in the comments. Otherwise, let us start as a male human. Also, if you would like to support the channel even more than you already do, then there is a join button down below. You get a really cool badge and you can vote on a whole bunch of stuff in various games, like renaming characters, requesting games to, to appear on the channel and things like that. Otherwise, we're going to be a descendant of Sigmar, because we are going to be part of the Empire and a warrior priest. Your father was a warrior priest. Sounds fun. Or a Reichsguard knight? Ooh, that's difficult. I think I'm actually going to go for an engineer or a witch hunter. Mm, go for a witch hunter, I think, because I'd like to have uh, pistols. I'd like to have pistols, and I think witch, witch hunters do use pistols at the very least. So if they don't, then that's my bad. But yeah, gunsmith, we're gonna we're gonna use guns as much as we can, at the very least. So there we go. We're gonna be able to quit without saving. Do I gain uh, I don't gain a I don't gain a pistol immediately. That's gonna be a bit iffy, isn't it? Alright, so bear tilled <laughs> Bear tilled witch hunter. No. <laughs> That's not really gonna work. Bear tilled hunter. There we go. Let's just do that. Oh, Hunter Beartilt? Yes, Hunter Beartilt. Hunter Beartilt sounds like a much better idea. There we go, Hunter Beartilt. And we are going to, yeah, by the way, they've added a whole bunch of extra skills here. So you can see that they've added mana control, magic power, and magic control. These all have different effects. So mana control is basically all about uh, making it possible for high armor users. So in other words, you know, characters that have very heavy armor on to be able to use spells. As you can see here at level four, you can boost your mana and pay a percentage increase in mana cost to bypass encumbrance modifiers for that cast. So in other words, as a heavily armored unit, you'd be able to use this to cast one of your most powerful spells for uh, the same amount of penalty that you would normally have if you didn't have any heavy armor on. So that's a pretty cool thing. Magic power, very self-explanatory, just increases damage. Magic control is this other thing which increases your magic control skill, allowing you to gain access to more spells and reach competency levels when casting them. Increasing this will also increase the chances of successful casting and the radius of your spell effects. 
So you need at least one of the, one point in this to also gain access to the magic guilds. So basically, if you want to be a pure magic caster, you're going to need to take magic power and magic control, and maybe one point or two in mana control. But personally, I don't think you need that much unless you're going to be using uh, unless you're going to be using heavy armor, and you know we're not really going to be doing that. Okay, so we've got two in engineering as well, which is not exactly what I want here. Uh, I am going to be using a pistol and to do that we are going to increase our agility as much as possible so we can increase our weapon master skill increase our athletic skill and what else do we want to go for here i don't really know we've got a whole bunch of different spreads here we probably want to increase our pathfinding that's usually going to be something really good but i also want to make sure that we are capable of doing damage in melee so we should probably get a couple of points in iron flesh and power strike too and we'll just take a one-handed we'll, we'll try to be a bit faithful to the witch hunter sort of lore and things because I, I mean i'm gonna be the first person to say that i'm not exactly familiar with a lot of warhammer lore which is unfortunate to say the least but basically what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that we are using a, a sword and using a pistol and that's very much witch hunter-esque so we'll hopefully try to uh, do something like that by the way the reason why i'm also playing empire is that the creators have done something really really cool and i'm actually just going to save real quick just in case i have a problem with the troop trees and it causes me to crash or something but what they've done is they've actually split the troop tree into three parts and that's also something that why, I, why I wanted to play with the Empire this time around. Because the Empire before didn't have this many things. Yes, look at this. It's just absolutely crazy. So basically you have Imperial recruits, Northern Imperial recruits, Southern Imperial recruits, Witch Hunter recruits, and Empire Militia. So all of these are going to be different now. Of course, the main thing that we have to think about here are just the normal imperial recruits and then the northern ones and then the southern ones those are the three splits and you can see here that they have vastly different ways of leveling up as well so you're going to have a lot of different things to field on, uh, on, on in battle basically so it's really really cool the way that they've done that and who am i recruiting right now i'm, I'm recruiting just imperial recruits just normal imperial recruits so if i have a look uh, they level up into Reichsguard Knights, which is actually perfectly acceptable to me. I think that's pretty cool. I'd like to get Engineers as well, so let's have a look. Where are the Engineers? There they are. Imperial Engineers, they're going to give us the Engineer Repeater Carbine, which is just an absolutely insane weapon. So that, I need Southern Imperial Recruits. Not entirely sure where I have to go to recruit those, but I assume I'm going to have to probably go down here, maybe? But yeah, I'm just going to move around and we'll have a look-see at what we can do. I'm a bit worried about our gear at the moment. Oh, I am actually... Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Okay, fine, fine. This is actually fantastic. I actually, Oh, cool. I actually start with a Witch Hunter hat as well. But I was not expecting to start with a pistol. So uh, this is very, very nice. Okay, I'm, I'm very pleased with this. Great. I actually thought that we would have uh, some difficulties. Hello, Imperial Rifleman. Could you just leave me alone real quick? Yeah, those guys are going to absolutely murder us if we try to attack them. So let's probably not try to do that just yet. And ah, there we go. Southern Imperial recruits right there. Very nice indeed. Okay, so technically I could go into the arena now. We could join a tournament as well, but I do not have enough money. Ooh, Blazing Sun Warhorse looks really fun. Okay, well, unfortunately I don't have enough <laughs> of anything. I really don't have enough of anything right now. So we are going to go into the arena, I suppose. Let's go into the arena and see what I can do. Oh, yeah. One-handed sword. I was hopeful that I might get a pistol. But I don't know whether they're going to give you a pistol for the arena. Uh, I'm hopeful that the arena is also going to give me a pretty decent amount of, well, money in Warsword. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I, keep, I, I forget how... Uh, how that is actually so thankfully these are just novice fighters this is going to be pretty easy for us i think we look quite witch hunter-esque with our hairstyle as well amazingly enough i randomized it so that's kind of cool oh my shield how dare you how dare you i don't have any points in shield so i am obviously going to be losing my shield really really easily uh, this seems like an 
this seems like an unbalanced weapon. It seems to take a little bit of time to actually react to me wanting to defend with it, which is quite weird. Oh well, I guess uh, I guess we just got to get used to it. Thankfully, we are getting to see a wide variety of, of enemies here as well, which I actually really like. So we actually get to see lizard man and everything. I know, I think a lot of people actually wanted me to play as a lizard man, so don't worry about that because, you know, whenever I get into Warsword Conquest, I get into it in a pretty big way. So maybe we'll, we'll have another series at some point, which will be focusing on the lizard men. And uh, personally, I feel like the lizard men have a pretty, pretty hard start, which might very well be a, a reason why I'm a bit dubious about starting over there because they are generally quite difficult to start with because of the area. Their territory is quite difficult to navigate. They have a lot of, well, a lot of problems, really. They have a lot of problems in that area. So I'm not entirely sure if we're going to be doing that right away. But yeah, I know the Empire territory much, e much more, much more familiar with it. And uh, I guess that's a that's a reason why I would do it uh, this way. And also because I'd like to use pistols. It's been such a long time since I've actually used a pistol, so it would be kind of fun to try it out. Because I know that we did use a pistol with our Skaven, and I thought that was really fun. So we'll see what we can do about that. And maybe even using some magic as well. I, I don't think I can use magic with ranged weapons. I think we found that out last time when I was playing Winds of Magic. And, uh, well, that's kind of... A shame but it's kind of cool to play as the Empire because we've never actually done that before because usually what I'll say is oh humans they're very boring to play with aren't they yes exactly but you know it's gonna be kind of fun to actually play with them for once because as I say they have increased the amount of variety in the troop trees and they've just generally added a whole bunch of different troops which is really really fun to see Oh, we're up against champion fighters right now. A bit worried about that. I'd like to pick up this shield. There we go. Nice. That is definitely going to help us out. I only need to survive another nine people. Should be able to do it. Oh, that was close. The orc was almost on me right there. That was really, really close. Okay, I've got to be careful here. I mean, we're, we're actually leveling up my proficiencies pretty nicely. Yes, fight each other. Fight each other. And then I will take out whoever survives. <laughs> yes, very nice. Okay, very good. Nice. Okay, so we eliminated 32 in the arena. Let's see how much money we actually get. 500 gold. Mm, that's actually pretty good. That is actually pretty good. I am quite surprised at that. That is nice. I don't think I'm going to go into a tournament just yet because I think that's going to be a little bit too harsh for us. We did level up, so let's level up my agility once again. And I will be, yeah, constitution might actually be something I want to go for as well, because as you can see, it increases recovery time from illness and infliction, recover health on the map faster, potion effects last longer, and so on and so forth. I don't know whether I want to do that right now, though. Is there anything else I really want to take? Pathfinding, probably. I mean, we are going to come across a whole bunch of people that will no doubt be able to take pathfinding for us. But for the moment, I'm just going to do it this way. Now, bear in mind that we do not have... Ooh, Nurgle Zealots. Okay, let's let's do it. Let's attack. But yeah, anyway, do, do bear in mind that we do not have Freelancer. Freelancer is not available in Warsword anymore. It used to be available, not in the Winds of Magic Edition, but they removed it because of compatibility problems, and that's absolutely understandable. So let's see what we can do here. I don't think any of my guys have ranged weapons, which is kind of unfortunate. Oh! Nice. The the uh, the pistols seem to seem to react a lot better than they used to. Nice. Okay, I'm liking this. Very good. Let's see if we can do another one. There we go. A little bit more damage. A little bit more damage for Hunter Beartilt. And we'll see if we can do some more damage here. Oh, now that was some nice damage. I think I think the uh, <laughs> is the effect a bit. Is the effect not working as intended? I'm actually unsure about that. It doesn't seem to be coming out of the uh, coming out of the actual weapon. But who, who, who do, why do I care? I don't care. It's doing a lot of damage, so that's that's absolutely fine with me. All right, let's see if I can do some more damage. Oh, nice headshot too. Yeah, starting with such a high proficiency in firearms really does make a huge difference.
All right, so uh, yeah, I had a bit of a crash in that particular village battle, unfortunately. It just went straight to desktop, no error message whatsoever. So that is a little off-putting to me if I'm going to be making a series on it because I have experienced crashes before in mods like Sparta. But I never usually have crashes in anything else like Prophecy of Pendor or Perizno or anything like that. So I don't exactly know why that would be because Sparta is also a mod that does not use WSC, whereas I'm actually using WSC with Warsword. So it's a bit weird because you would think that uh, something that doesn't use WSC might be a little bit more stable or less stable. Either way, I can't really do much about it. So we're going to have to level up my firearm skill again because, of course, I did not have a save in between. And uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't know why mods crash. It's just super weird to me. Anyway, we're going to tell our people to charge in here. I did manage to recruit a couple more units than I did last time, which is, is I suppose, pretty good. And now I have the opportunity to fight. Yes, take that. And we will try and do some stabby stabby as well, maybe. And I was actually hoping that my guys would uh, knock a couple more of them unconscious, but I think I only have a very small amount of prisoner management anyway, so it's probably not going to make too much difference. But yeah. Anyway, basically the best thing about this particular update is the ability to use magic in sieges. And that is a big, big deal. Absolutely massive deal right there. So I am actually going to speed things up a little bit because this is a special feature. I just wanted to show you the, shall, shall we say, just say the, the initial couple of fights and things. And now what we're going to do is, well, I'm going to go off screen and I'm going to level myself up a little bit and get some magic, get some magic powers. And then we will try a siege and then we'll try and see if I can use some magic in those. All right, so before we go into a siege, I just thought I'd take a look at some of the Empire spells because we've actually never done that before. So as you can see, light magic focuses on speeding up your allies in terms of movement and weapon speed and slowing down your enemy. The spell Bironus Time Warp is the fastest spell in the game. Cast it on your reinforcements so they arrive in double quick time. The school also has a magic missile and AoE spell which annihilate undead. Hmm, cool. All right, let's go on to the next one, which is Gold Lore of Metal. And what kind of spells can we learn? Gold magic has the ability to destroy the armor of the enemy and leave them at the mercy of your troops. You can also inflict damage with Searing Doom and the powerful AoE spell Final Transmutation. Although unlike most schools, the radius is from the caster, so you need to get in close. The school also boasts powerful augmentations, with which both protect and enhance your allies hmm sounds cool okay and uh, what about life i think that's the healing one isn't it yep okay we've we've already seen this with my uh, elf i believe my elf was able to cast healing magic so we will not take a look at that just yet let's take a look at the heaven one as well very offensive school with multiple magic missiles and aoe's the spell harmonic convergence is very unique and allows your weaker troops to inflict damage against anyone and Curse of the Midnight Wind suppresses the special abilities of your enemies. Otherwise, we have Shadows here. I think we, we know this one as well. But anyway, it is, uh, Master Manipulators both in terms of buffing allies and hexing enemies. It is the best school for weakening your enemies and leaving them at the mercy of your front line. It does have a magic, magic missile and an AoE attack, but is primarily a support class. The spell Steed of Shadows will summon you a Shadow Steed, a, a shadow steed at any time. That's pretty cool. I think we know this one as well. Specializes in conditional magic missile spells which have unique effects and work better against different troops. There is also a spell which causes the enemy to lose courage quickly. And the spell Purple Sun of Zerius is one of the most powerful AoE spells in the old world. Ooh, pretty cool. And then we have uh, Bright Wizard. Yeah, I know about Bright Wizards. Bright Magic uh, uses all fire stuff. Has no hexes, although it does have the very unique spell Piercing Bolts of Burning, which turn all arrows and bolts into flaming versions mm, pretty cool and then we have beasts school of powerful augments which increase ally speed damage and weapon speed it boasts one of the mo more powerful recastable missiles but no aoe at all the most powerful spell can turn an allied troop into a wild bear all right well i think i'm probably going to do something like this no no i'm going to do i'm going to do law of light i think we're going to do that there we go. I'd like to purchase some spells. 
All right, so we're going to take a look at the spells real quick. I've already bought two. Basically, we have something here that makes uh, enemies receive a 4% ranged accuracy debuff. Really fantastic for sieges. And then we also have speed of light, which allows our allies to, incre to increase their weapon speed, which is just fantastic too. Otherwise, we have lighter battle here, which gives our allies increased courage. When we have a bunch of other things which are light damage, so basically piercing damage against undead and demons, double damage versus undeads. So if we wanted to fight against undead units, this would probably be the greatest spell class to take. Otherwise, what you have here, damage increases with magic level, double, double damage versus undead. This is a mace which you can summon and then use in battle, which is pretty cool. Otherwise, you have Shimmering Cloak here. Cloak has 83% chance of absorbing all ranged damage sounds fun let's take it and then we have this which is the time warp that we were told about beforehand which increases our allies movement speed by a hundred percent what craziness is that otherwise we also have this which will make enemies move slower and make them much more inaccurate so that's exactly what we're going to be going with right here and i haven't done anything else about getting some units yet so well stay tuned all right, so just to give you a brief overview of what is currently going on with my character at the moment, I'm just currently perusing through the marketplace, and this is probably the pistol I would have bought if I stayed alongside the Witch Hunter style of doing things. And that's the thing, if this turns into a full series, which it may, it just, just depends, and then uh, I'm probably using, I'll probably try to use the Witch Hunter pistol because it has a bonus against shields, which is pretty cool. I think most pistols actually do, so... That's not really going to be a big deal, but looks kind of cool. Anyway, otherwise we have muskets and long rifles here. Empire muskets, witch hunter sword, which looks really cool. Might actually use that because it is a two-handed slash one-hand. It seems like a pretty fun weapon to me. Otherwise, we're going to take a look at the armor here. You can see that this armor is just classic empire. Really, really nice to use that. But of course, because I am wanting to use spells, I'm not going to be using this right now. Ah, now look at this. What have I found here? I have found a sheep and a halfling goat. Yes, I have actually found a halfling merchant, amazingly enough. So this is basically where you want to go if you are playing as a halfling. And of course, I cannot wear any of this armor because it is halfling only. But I think that's really, really cool that they've put that in there because I think they had that in before, but I never found it. So it was really, really rare. But I find it here and it's pretty, pretty nice. All right, so look at us right here. We are in a battle against the Tomb Kings. I thought my light spells were going to be pretty good for this. So we're going to try and cast these things. Shimmering Cloak. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's probably not a good idea. Let's just do this. Let's just do this. Speed of Light and then the Protection. Oh, my attempt to cast it fails. Why? Why is it failing? There we go. Okay, we actually did it this time. All right, fantastic. Okay, so, yeah, we also should do the Time Warp thing as well. There we go. And now we'll just tell everyone to charge in. Oh, we should actually tell everyone to charge in, not just the uh, not just the archers. That would probably be a good idea. But yeah, look at this. Everyone is just going to absolutely murder these Tomb King units. They literally cannot do anything. There is no way they can do anything against such an overwhelming buff. The buff that we have is just so good. Anyway, what is this? What does this net do again? We need to we need to cast this and see what it actually does. Affected enemy troops have movement reduced. Okay, yeah, I've got to remember all of these things because I am, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not aware of any of these. I literally just bought a whole bunch of spells and I have no idea what any of them do. So that's that's going to be uh, a little bit a little bit iffy, but otherwise we can capture a couple of people here and we can also take a look at some of the Tomb King stuff. They actually have some really, really cool helms. So if you have a decent army army size of about 30, 40, you're probably going to be able to tackle some caravan of some sort and then be able to pillage and indeed pilfer uh, a couple of items from them. Of course, you're probably not going to be able to... Oh, you can wear this as a human. That's pretty cool. Okay. Anyway, I'm not going to take anything because, of course, this is a special feature. Otherwise, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to make my way over to Kemri. Kemri is going to be my first potential attack area. I was actually hoping that I might be able to... Oh, never mind. That is not going to be my first potential attack area because these guys really want to murder me, apparently. So we're going to go to the Black Tower instead. <laughs> that sounds like a really, really good place to go doesn't it? Yes. Anyway, oh, this is a siege tower. Oh, well, never mind. I think I think we're going to be done pretty quickly. There you go. Done very, very quickly indeed. 
and we can now head inside, and we're going to be able to cast our spells. So let's uh, let's do that. Let's see what I can do here. Okay, so speed. We probably want to do speed of light, don't we? We want to do speed of light. Boom. There you go. Let's do this. Speed of light, and we probably want to do the time warp, and so we can get them over to the siege thing a little bit quicker. I'm going to put on my uh, enemy troops thing to make sure that their ranged accuracy is not so good. I think, don't think I hit them. Let's face it. I need to get I need to get used to the fact that the net is a uh, enemy attack rather than a, a buff for my allies. And also, shimmering cloak is definitely going to be something I want to activate onto myself. Hopefully, it's going to give me enough mana soon. I do have quite a lot of uh, <laughs> I do have quite a lot of um, magic control and and mana control and all that stuff. So theoretically, I should be absolutely fine with that. And, uh, well, let's just see if we're able to move our forces to the wall. Hopefully the Siege Tower is going to hurry up. i got to say, the first thing that I notice about being able to use magic in sieges is that you are quite capable of completely eliminating, well, not even eliminating, but reducing the effect of enemies quite a lot. And i got to say that I personally feel like that is a fantastic change. I know that the... The, the creators did actually say in the changelog that they are including an option in the mod to potentially disable this because let's face it sometimes it's just going to be something that you're not going to want in a siege because maybe uh, maybe it's going to cause the game to crash or it is going to be too imbalanced that it's just going to completely throw everything out of whack and yeah I think that it probably will on some level because let's face it I kind of didn't really choose offensive spells on purpose because I really did not want to have a situation where I could completely imbalance the game so incredibly heavily and I wanted to try and buff my units more than you know get my own kills especially in the special feature because I wanted to highlight the fact that this particular school of magic is all about buffing and all about making your units do do much better than anything else. So otherwise, we're just going to use the net. Look at the net. Look at the net. It's working. It's working. Yes. Okay, speed of light. Let's also use that. And we'll use the protection as well. Or I actually can't do that just yet. Now I can use the protection. There we go. Enemy ranged accuracy is hexed. Yes, that's exactly what we want to see. Now, unfortunately, we are up against Necropolis Knights. Uh, Ushabtis and mummies, so this might very well not go very well at all. <laughs> uh, oh dear, I actually was thinking to myself, we might have some, oh dear. Am I going to have a crash? If I, okay, so if I have a crash, then that is going to be pretty bad, but at, 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 at this point, I haven't actually been having any performance issues with the exception of that one crash, so that's kind of interesting. I would like to be able to get in there. If I could actually get in there, I might be able to do something. Yes, yes, give, get me in there. I, I. By the way, I could die extremely quickly, by the way, because I am literally just using a, uh, a light robe. But I do have the dodge skill, by the way. I did manage to uh, get the dodge skill because I thought to myself, okay, if I'm going to be using light armor, then I could very easily get the dodge skill and I could maybe do quite a bit of damage. Oh, look at this. We're being buffed. We're being buffed by the one of one of the wizards, one of the wizards that we have. So this is cool. I like this quite a bit. Okay, let's see if we can do some more damage here. Bear in mind that my sword is just a witch hunter sword. It's actually not something that is supposed to be uh, super powerful. But uh, yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll hopefully be able to. Yes, take out that guy. Thank you. Help me, Reichsguard Knight. Help me. Okay, there we go. Everything's going quite nicely so far. Maybe I should, uh, yeah, I should probably buff our, our friends a little bit. Get my Shimmering Cloak on to try and prevent range damage. And the net. The net will happen again. Yes. Okay, that is going to really help us. Oh, this mummy is really doing a lot of damage to me right now. Got to be a bit careful of this guy. He knows what's up. He really does know what's up. Alright, so Tomb Rot emanates from the mummy and you feel pain behind your eyes. You take two damage. Apparently, they have some skills and abilities that can that can activate at certain times, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, look at this. I think that they've done a fantastic job. Props to the mod creators for including uh, including magic 
in Sieges, because that's exactly what I was talking about in some previous Warsword Conquest series. I was always saying, oh, if only I could use magic here, you know, that kind of thing. And they have done exactly that, which is just fantastic. By the way, why does this guy have a mount? <laughs> why does he have a mount in a siege? I have no idea, but it's fun nevertheless. This is just a huge amount of fun, and I would highly recommend checking it out, downloading it through the link in the description, and you're going to have a whale of a time. It's going to be great. Also, I have a healer, apparently. There is apparently a healer in my party who is healing me, and... Uh, well, there you go. We actually have healed up fully to full HP. Pretty crazy. I could have taken a healing potion as well, by the way. There's a reason why I bought those, just in case. Just in case I, I happen to take a lot of damage over time. But yeah, using light armor and dodge is a really, really great way to stay alive as much as possible. And there you go. We're done. For renown, we did lose a lot of units, but thankfully we have a decent... Surgery skills, so we had 68 of them wounded, 14 killed, and we eliminated 300 units. Yes, 300 in actual fact. All right, so let's just take a bunch of these guys. And we have a lot of space. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of space, which is really quite amazing. Let's take some skeletal knights, uh, skeletal lancers, and there you go. All right, so now we can take all of this if we want to. And I can basically just sell all of this for a massive amount of cash too. But it's not really necessary, let's face it. Alright, so all of my companions are also leveling up. I, do, I did find a bunch of companions. And we have taken the Black Tower. And uh, we're not going to plunder it or anything like that. We are going to be appointing Jaleel, I guess. He can do it. And we're going to be calling this the Hunter Huntering Kingdom. Yes, because we're very good at this. We're very good at that. Okay, so let's have a look and see what we want to choose. Should we, should we... Gray, really? Okay, green. No. I would like something... White? No, white is high elves, aren't they? Okay, so maybe, maybe like an off-white or like a pink or something like that. Maybe something like this. That might be a bit too light. Uh, I don't want to change the domestic policy. Uh, that's okay. I think that's a pretty decent uh, pretty decent color right there. Now, the Tomb Kings are, of course, going to be coming over here, and they're going to try and retaliate. But the whole point of this was to show you the magic in the sieges, and that's exactly what I've done. So if you would like to check out, as you can see, my stats. <laughs> I went a bit crazy with the stats, by the way. Yeah, anyway, if you'd like to check out the mod, there is a link in the description. Otherwise... If you would like to see a series and you'd like to see an Empire series or a Lizardman series, then let me know. Otherwise, you can find down below in the description a whole bunch of playlists and they will be uh, detailing my previous adventures in Warsword Conquest. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.